Hello folks, welcome back. Oh, as you can tell by the... It's another red wine and... Look at this. This show's sponsored. <laughs> they probably don't want to be sponsored. They probably don't want to see this. The Museum of Arts and Sciences here in Daytona Beach. Actually, it's a pretty cool place to go. They have they do have the cool laser light shows. Um, yeah, especially like uh, music. I do have to look that up too. Shoot. There we go. Cheers, everyone. Yeah, tonight I didn't have pizza. I went over to a friend's house to celebrate a little early Valentine, early Valentine's Day. Had burgers instead. You know what? It's what she wanted. I'm cool with that. I can skip that. I'm going to be having enough pizza on my birthday to make up for a lot of stuff. So yeah, I'm, I am going to get that cheesesteak pizza. I just hope that one card wasn't my paycheck. It's Friday. Friday. Normally they mail it out Friday because normally I get it by Tuesday. We'll see. I have to figure. I have to figure so much stuff out. The money's still there. And that's all I care about. They're shelling out money left and right. That's all I need to know. So I'm not here to talk about any of that stuff, though. What am I doing? Wait a second. Is this the crown jewel shirt? Yeah. That means one thing. Well, it means AEW. I think, I don't know, my other, I have to, I need a freaking, like, week off or something. I still have to take down my Christmas lights, damn it. Uh, let's see here. So this is uh, AEW Rampage. Let's talk about what happened in a little bit. We were Pongy 2K versus the Young Bucks. The Bucks of Youth is chaos. Taking on the Bullet Club. So you know what's going to happen. There's going to be cool stuff going on. Um, starts off. That rope running and the flying Huracarana. That's great. Rapungi 2K is so athletic. Rocky Romano is so good. I do miss Rapungi 3K though. Showing you. You're going back to the original. The OG. Rapungi 2K. Not 3K. I don't know. There is no. Yeah. They don't deserve it too sweet. Yeah, uh, Matt Jackson gets ping pong a little bit. Uh, on the outside was Trent Breda. Punch him. On the inside, Rocky Romero would punch him then. Uh, good tag team work by Rapungi 2K. Can never say anything bad about that. Um, the Young Bucks, though, there are, there are no slashes themselves. So it's pretty good. Look at the. Is that nine? Oh, yeah, the Young Bucks, they, they say, ah, we're done with this. They go out. Of course, Rapungi 2K chases them in the faces. They want to finish the match. Rocky Romero eventually gets in by, by uh, nine, the nine count. Yeah. Then. Danhausen! I curse you! He cursed the Young Bucks. Yeah. I know he still has a broken leg. Once you break a leg, I don't know where he broke it. I don't know if he broke his shin bone. I don't know if he broke the I don't know if he broke the tibia, the fibia, or the femur. He broke the femur. He ain't wrestling no more. He's gonna have these appearances. If he had broke the tibia or fibia, he's gonna be doing very light work. Um, it's not something you come back from. You can rehab it. Generally, you have like pins and from what very little I know, you have pins and screws in it, which is never good. Um, trying to hold the bone together, let it heal up. And now they do the weird thing of like taking the screws out. That just sounds weird. Yeah, Danhausen showed up. I don't know. I guess he's in chaos. Darn it, there goes my freaking dream tag, my dream triple threat match of Yano versus Orange Cassidy versus Danhausen. That kind of sucks. Um, yeah, Matt Jackson, he starts to go, oh, ultimate warrior. Yeah, it's, I don't know. Um, 
And then I'll, uh, the Young Bucks hug it out. That was kind of cool. They stole Rapongi. They stole the best friend's move of hugging it out. Uh, then I'll, I'll tell you what. The one move I just utterly hate now, because it's way too fake and it would never, ever work, is a double Huracarana. That just looks so terrible. Uh, Rapungi 2K on the outside did the Doomsday Knee Strike. That was pretty cool, though. Um, and then he came back, a little double team, little double teamwork. They did some German suplexes. The Young Bucks came back with a super kick party, and then it was just double clothesline, so it like negated everything. I'm not liking the fact AEW wrestlers, especially if they've been in the Indies too long, they don't sell anything. I mean, someone hit me with a German suplex and I fell on the back of my neck. I'd be laying there for like at least 20 seconds. You might even pin me that way. But for them just to like bounce up and hit super kicks. And then for a Pungi 2K to bounce up and hit like double clotheslines. Eh. I mean, it's a super kick. It was Shawn Michaels' finishing move. The sweet chin music. Trent did hit the strong zero. That was broken up though. There is a difference between no selling and breaking something up. The strong zero looks freaking nasty. Uh, Matt Jackson then, then does his own super kick party. Uh, they hit the Meltzer driver. Uh, the Meltzer driver is okay. It's just a spike pile driver. They just wanted to make Dave Meltzer feel good and give him more and, and have him dish out more stars so so they can make more cash. Who knows? Uh, the Eventually, the Young Bucks do hit the BTE trigger, and then, wait a second, they start to beat up people, and, and you know who shows up? Wait a second. Oh my goodness! Who's making, who's making a second comeback in the ring? It's the leader of the Bullet Club himself, the Switchblade, Jay White. This Jay White is too sweet for life. Well, that was pretty cool. Again, whenever there's New Japan Bullet Club people coming over, I get kind of excited about it. So that was pretty cool to see. But that was like it. On the match itself, it was good. I can't complain about it. Again, they don't sell anything. Meh. Cheeseburger match. You know, Brick Baker versus Robin Renegade. Oh my goodness. Robin Renegade at least started off hot. She had an arm drag takedown. Oh no, she had a headlock takedown. That was pretty good. But then it was all Brick Baker, the arm ringer. Uh, the nice. Oh, the nice trap Sambo throw. It's hard to explain. It's, it's like a Northern Lights bridging suplex. You control the one wrist. You hook the elbow. Put your head underneath. Back bridge. It's so pretty looking. Man, that's a nice Sambo throw that she did. Whenever you start doing Judo, Sambo, Wheel Jiu Jitsu, uh, Collegiate Wrestling, it's always going to get a pop from me. Uh, but also hit the Alligator Roll. Another Collegiate move. That was shocking. Um, hit the Fisherman's Neck Breaker and then the Curb Stomp. She stole something from, from Seth. No, that can't happen. I was gonna say maybe, maybe, maybe Brit, maybe Brit got got Becky pregnant. But no, Adam calls a vanilla midget. Adam calls a definite step down from Seth Rollins. So yeah, Brit and Becky. Indeed, that's a terrible thing to think of. That's my last bad thought for this week. Oh, nothing but good, pure, clean thought. Actually, I'm saving all those for Lent in a few weeks. <laughs> my birthday week. Oh, yeah. What a debauchery that's going to be. Actually, that week's going to suck. Because it's the end of speed week. I have those two days off. I'll probably go one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, jeez. Probably work ten days straight. 
And then the boss is, and then the big boss is going to fire me or I'm going to wind up quitting. Again, they say the one, I'm like waiting. Like this is a nice thing about getting old. You like just don't care anymore. Like I'm just waiting for them to say the wrong thing and just to me to say, you know what? F this, I'm done. Three years of my life here. No chance at a promotion. Hiring. Big titted boobied college girls not even in college dumb floozies that can't do subtraction yeah one day on this I'll air out all my dirty laundry that's okay um, yeah but Britt Baker won with a curb stomp that was a pinfall you knew it was going to happen a ham sandwich And then she just for extra extra stank put in the lockjaw that brought Thunder Rosa in. When Thunder Rosa came in, we had Jamie Hader show up again. Except for she wasn't wearing her shorts though. She has such a great ass. Damn it, that's the second bad thing I said today. <laughs> then Mercedes Martinez, who looks absolutely stunning and terrifying at the same time with all her tattoos. If I saw a mad, angry Mexican woman look like looking like her coming at me in a dark alley. I don't know if I'd be scared or excited. But, yeah. So, yeah, then Jamie Hayter and Mercedes Martinez started to argue about who gets to beat up Thunder Rosa. Really? This is what you're going to argue about? No wonder this was a ham sandwich of a match. So, it wasn't bad. It just... Nothing special. I mean, I could have done the same stuff. And we had Chris Tatlander and legit Layla Hirsch. I understand Layla Hirsch's stuff. I mean, if you're going to say you're from the Andromeda Galaxy, you better darn well start speaking in gibberish. Like the lyrics. Sissy four bit, yeah. Um, uh, hobo Tom, hey, promo gold. So yeah, that's how I want her to speak. If you're gonna say you're from the Andromeda Galaxy, you speak in gibberish, or just go boop. I expect people to understand you. Like, I have Tony go, whoa, I had the most amazing vision in my head after that boop. Oh, whoa. Well, let me tell you what that boop represented. But if she just speaks English, she's like, you know, she just went to the desert. Because I have seen, while fishing in Atlantic City, they had a, a very quick story. They had an air show. And I was fishing off the jetty, and they have the airplanes doing all the maneuvers over the ocean. Heaven forbid something bad happens, they can crash in the ocean and not kill people. But I saw a B-2 bomber literally on its wingtip doing corkscrews. If you are in a desert, eating stuff, that's kind of questionable. Drinking stuff, and definitely... Smoking the wacky tobacco. Yeah. You see any airplane that looks a little bit different, like a B-2 bomber doing corkscrews, you're going to say there's aliens out there. The other thing I don't like about the alien conspiracy theory, the ma there are some in the Air Force that, that I'm like, that, that seems almost right. But then you get the hick from Kentucky saying, yeah, I was coming home from the bar and all of a sudden I saw these blue flashing lights. The next thing I know, I was being dragged out of my car and I was restrained by, by the hands and I couldn't break free. And, and they questioned me and, and I wound up somewhere else. Yeah, it's called you got picked up by the cops. They put you in a drunk tank and left you by your front porch. Okay? I mean... 
There probably are aliens out there. There's probably alien life in our own solar system. I won't go off on a supreme tangent. Scientifically, they have proven that there is salt water on Europa. You have salt water, you have some, some kind of chemical source, you can't have life. You're not going to have very advanced life. You're going to have like crabs and worms running around. But it, it's, it's, it is scientifically possible. You can go look it up in journals and stuff. Um, I know a couple years ago they had the lights, lights in order going through the sky, the satellites in order going through the sky. That was kind of creepy. I figured it's, it's, it's one of three things. Either we're getting invaded by Georgia, because I live in Florida. Um, there's a string of satellites, and it's pretty well coordinated. Or I'm like, it's time, it's time to bow down to the Klingon Empire. Hail Kalos. So yeah. Well, obviously it was a string of satellites. Although, although two out of the three weren't really plausible. So yeah. Again, if you're going to portray yourself as a gimmick is coming from the Andromeda Galaxy. It's just speak delirious. Like, give me a reason to, like, care. Be besides her... Oh, woman parts. I don't care about Chris Statlander. Layla Hirsch, I'm like, huh. This is interesting. She's pissed off at the world. I can see where that could come to play. Not being a fake alien. At least try to... Be a real alien, I guess. But yeah, um, so that led us to the Hook versus Blake Lee match. This is pretty good. Hook has some good amateur background. And that's that's my rant and rave about that. Um, good transitions by Hook. Uh, uh, Blake Lee got in a couple moves, but yeah, again, the good transitions, the good counter wrestling by Hook. Uh, he got distracted a little bit by QT Marshall. Ugh, whatever. Didn't do much. The T-bone has plex. The cross faces. And no, it's not the red rum. It's one of two things you call it. You call it either by its proper judo name, the Katahajine, or you call it the Taz mission. You don't call it some other move. Just say it's the Taz mission. Hook wins as expected. I mean, that was just ex it was just expected. Ham sandwich match. I could go in there and take those moves too. Nothing great. Um, then we have the Gun Club versus Jurassic Express. This is going to be my second rant and rave. Actually, you know what I do need? Before I do, I have to have a little sip here. Sippy sip. Or maybe a whole mouthful. AEW tries to, and we just saw hook. They try to hook you in. You have a known first first match was a tag team match, but there it's just like yeah, you know who's gonna win. Hook's gonna win. Britt Baker's not gonna lose her belt. More than like minus the three percent botch roll, Jurassic Express are gonna keep their belts too. So that's three out of four matches you already know the end to. Why? It's not even that interesting. You're like, ooh, Rapongi 2K versus the Young Bucks. They went back and forth in Japan. They could do something screwy here. Something weird could happen. <sighs> You're thinking the Young Bucks, because they are the, the, the VIPs, will win. But they lost to the private party. It just puts that... A decent percent of doubt in your mind. But then they know sell and you're like, eh. And then you see the rest of these matches. And you're like, eh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's good to see Hook. Britt Baker is just way too skinny. I want to see Rebel. I want to see Jamie Hayter. I want to see Rebel and Jamie Hayter. Throwing Mercedes Martinez and Thunder Rosa. Oh my. Now that's a birthday fantasy. But yeah. I digress. Um, they're just predictable. 
So the Gun Club versus Jurassic Express. Jungle Boy he does pretty good. Does does an arm wrench. Then he then he tried to walk the top rope and botched it. He even tried to do the Mexican arm drag, and the one gun was the, the one gun boy. I don't know which one it was. Just like what the hell are you doing? He had like no clue. He couldn't go with it. He's like I'm not. This is weird. That was a bad botch. Um, what else? Uh, they lawn darted. Or, um, no. Uh, Lucius Hortison got the tag in. Uh, Jungle Boy had to recover after the botch. Uh, lawn darted one of the gun clips. Lawn darted Snake Eyes. Uh, uh, to me, Snake Eyes is more of a drop. Lawn dart, you kind of like throw them. Into the top turn buckle. Whatever you want to call it. I don't know. Excalibur just... I swear he just makes up names sometimes. Threw him into the top turn buckle. Lawn darts, snake, snake eyes, whatever you want to call it. Uh, he's just... Luchasaurus is just too strong for them. Um, however, Jungle Boy got back in. There was a near two count. The Gun Club actually do have great tag team work. Again, they are brothers. They were coached up by Billy Gunn. I mean, you're not going to get much better than that. Well, you can, but there's Taz, and there's a lot. There's a few other people. Taz is up here. Honestly, Billy Gunn's probably like, Taz. Oh, I, I hate to do this to you, Taz. The Steinerts, they're just way too good. Steinerts for teacher. I hate to do this to the Steinerts, but there's Rey Mysterio. Having Rey Mysterio as a father puts your train level up here. Way too much knowledge. The Steiner brothers, yeah, a half step behind. Taz, a half step behind him. Billy Gunn, maybe a little bit more drop, maybe a full step behind. Again, not too shabby, though. So that, that's pretty good. Now, Christian Cage shows up. I guess Billy Gunn started to interfere a little bit. There was a double clothesline. Christian Cage takes out Billy Gunn. Uh, Jungle Boy hits the kill switch. Yeah. What did you expect? The Jurassic Express win. They they're not, they're not gonna drop their tag team belts on a on a rampage. What are you thinking? Ah, what is a crumpled up piece of paper if I ever saw it? And this match, that Bosch just dropped it. Can of soup. So that was it for Rampage. You know what? After that show. You need a drink. Um, two minutes. Next week. Or this week. Yeah, no, next week. Tomorrow Saturday. Sunday, there's going to be one video. Cooking with Hobo Tom. I'm going to show people how to make a California burrito. Or somewhat of a California burrito, I guess. Um, so there's going to be that. Again, it's going to be the Super Bowl or something. I don't know. I might put in... Ooh, that would be cool. How would that affect? That would definitely be different, though. I might even do a Super Bowl half... Nah. The timing on that would be wonky. Have to do that Saturday night. I don't know. Yeah, I doubt I'm going to do anything. So there will be a cooking with Hobo Tom in the Hobo Kitchen. I'm going to show you guys how to make a California burrito. Um, what else is there? Oh, yeah, Monday. It's Valentine's Day. I have my Valentine's Day all set up. It's two things. It's three things. Work. Gym. Jersey Mike's up. That's it. Maybe Killjoys. And chips. Chips are good. And soda. Because I just have other water. But yeah. Valentine's Day again. It's going to be the all women special here at the Daytona Beach Bonfight League. Tuesday is going to be the predictions video for this weekend. I will not be able to see any wrestling. I have to work. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and if there's bad weather on Monday. So after that, 
It's called, I have to get my hiney to work. Then the following week, Monday or Tuesday, I'll show you guys what it's like underneath the track at speed week. Um, then I have to figure out what my schedule is. Friday's my birthday. Yeah, I might be doing this. I might be absolutely obliterated too. I have to work. Hopefully not get fired next. That would suck getting fired my birthday week. I can see Bob doing that though. I have a funny feeling Bob likes to fire people. But other than that, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. And I'll see everyone later. Mike just doesn't care, I think. It's like, dude, you're, you're piling money. Well, you know what, folks, bye.